right, so for this week's Challenge Wednesday, we have our patient Dorian, and Dorian is examined during an initial session of cardiac rehab phase two. After three minutes of steady state submaximal exercise, the patient begins complaining of excessive fatigue. Which of the following is the most expected to increase initially and then remain relatively constant after three minutes? We have A, diastolic blood pressure, B, blood pH, C, chest discomfort, and D, is systolic blood pressure. All right, so let's go up to the top. Hurricane Dorian <laughs> is examined during an initial session of cardiac rehab phase two. Now, if you're not familiar with cardiac rehab, definitely want to check that out before you go into the MPTE. It's a hot topic. Why? Because there's a lot of patients who have MIs, cabbages, angioplasties. I mean, you name it, heart transplants, and they go through cardiac rehab. Um, but for this specific question, I don't know if it really makes much of a difference. All right. I mean, it's being examined, initial session of cardiac rehab. I mean, I'll hold on to that for now, but already it doesn't really seem like that's going to make that much of a difference. Let's continue on. It says after three minutes of steady state submaximal exercise, and I'm going to put that in my back pocket and I'm going to slow up real quick. After three minutes of steady state submaximal exercise, do you know what that is? Can y'all put that down? Y'all who are live with me right now, go ahead and put that down. What is steady state submaximal exercise? The way that I really think about it, you know, keeping it very straightforward is steady state is like, you know, the energy required by muscles equaling the amount of oxygen that's being delivered to those muscles right? Because the, the muscles need energy, right? The muscles need oxygen. They need to create ATP in order to do their job, right? So steady state submax exercise is when the energy that's required by those muscles is equal to how much oxygen is actually being delivered, right? That's steady state. Now, if you think about just regular traditional progressive exercise, like when you're just running full speed sprinting, right? Your muscles are continuing to require a lot of oxygen and your heart is like trying to pump all that blood out and get as much oxygen to those muscles. But that's not considered steady state because in that situation, the muscles may be requiring more than what is being delivered, right? So that's not steady state. Steady state is when the, the energy that's required by the muscles equals the amount of oxygen that's being delivered for ATP production. That's what steady state is, all right? So it says after three minutes of steady state submaximal exercise, the patient begins complaining of excessive fatigue. Okay, so I know that they're in cardiac rehab phase two. They're doing this steady state submax exercise. They're complaining of fatigue. Again, I don't know how much that's really helping me at this point. Something to think about, but we'll continue to move forward. It says in our last sentence, it's called the question stem. It says, which of the following is the most expected to initially increase? I should say increase initially. That's what the question says. Increase initially and then remain relatively constant after three minutes. Okay, and so we got A, diastolic blood pressure, B is blood pH, C is chest discomfort, and D is systolic blood pressure. Okay, before I go and start knocking down these answer choices, I need to tell you one little secret. This is what I'm thinking as I'm looking at this question, that when I look at the stem, it's like it's twofold, all right? It has two parts to it, and you got to make sure that you're answering both parts of the question stem. Can I read it again for you? It says, which of the following is the most expected to increase initially, that's number one, and then remain relatively constant after three minutes, that's number two. So your answer has to satisfy both of them, and you'll see that on your practice exams, potentially your MPTE, that this comes up like this again. Not this question, but I'm talking about this, this, this concept, this, pr this principle of where there's two things that you need to make sure that your answer is answering. All right, does that make sense? All right, so let's go down to the answer choices right now. A, diastolic blood pressure. All right, first of all, diastolic blood pressure is the amount of pressure, amount of force, I should say, on the arterial walls during relaxation of the heart. All right, the amount of pressure on the arterial walls during relaxation of 
the heart, the ventricles specifically. Now, my deal is this. Can I ask you a quick question? What does diastolic blood pressure normally do with exercise, y'all? Now, what, take yourself back to cardiopulmonary class. What does diastolic blood pressure normally do? You should be saying, well, it stays relatively constant. It should. Now, sometimes it can go up. Sometimes it can go down. It's usually plus or minus 10 maximum. It's still considered normal. So it can go up by 10 or down by 10, right? Um, but And that's still considered to be relatively normal. But for the most part, it should stay the exact same. Now, in the question stem, it says, which of the following is expected to increase initially and then re remain relatively constant after three minutes? I, diastolic blood pressure does not do that, baby. I'm sorry. It, it's not really expected to increase initially and then remain constant after three minutes. No, it should relatively, it should remain relatively constant, like pretty much throughout the entire time. Okay. And so a does not satisfy the question stem. I'm going to go ahead and put an X to it for now. Um, let's go ahead and look at B. B says blood pH. This is an interesting one. This threw a lot of y'all off because you were asking me about it today. So blood pH, we know that the normal ranges for that is what y'all go ahead, put it down below. What is normal range? You should be saying 7.35, right? 7.45. That's the range, 7.35 to 7.45. Now, here's the deal. What do we expect blood pH to do when we're exercising, especially with the steady state? Here's the deal. As you exercise and, and you get to the point where your muscles are fatiguing out and, and you know, what is the byproduct of that, that energy production, especially if the patient's using like an anaerobic system. What is the byproduct to that? You should be saying lactic, lactic acid. Am I right? Lactic acid. You know, and that tends to come when a person's experiencing fatigue. Am I right? And so lactic acid, what does that do to blood pH? It decreases it. Now, the question is, do I expect blood pH to increase, become more alkaline initially? No, if anything, I would expect it to decrease, become more acidotic initially, right? So it should actually decrease initially, not increase initially. Now, here's the thing. The other deal with blood pH is I really don't expect it to change much at all, to be honest with you. I mean, I really don't expect it to drop below 7.35 and all that stuff. That's just, that's not how the body regulates itself, right? And so... I, I don't expect the blood pH to really change much at all. I'm going to go ahead and put an X next to that. I do not believe it's our best answer right now. Let's continue moving. C says chest discomfort. Now, hold on a minute because some people selected this answer right here. So let's look up at the question. In the question, does it say anywhere that the patient has chest discomfort to start with? Like the patient came into us today for their initial session with chest discomfort. It does not. Nowhere. I have no idea if this patient even has chest discomfort. Now, do I expect them to have chest discomfort that increases initially? Not necessarily. No. All right. I, I don't really expect them to have chest angina. All right. So. What I would expect is, I said chest angina. <laughs> I don't expect them to have angina, okay? So what I would do is eliminate this answer because it really has nothing to do with the actual question. There's no reason why I would expect them to have chest discomfort that increases initially and it remains relatively constant after three minutes. Definitely not. Doesn't satisfy. Let's look at D. Doesn't mean it's the right answer, but let's check it out. D says systolic blood pressure. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. Let's look at the question stem. Question stem says, it does uh, it, it says the most expected to increase initially? Well, does systolic blood pressure increase initially? Bet your bottom dollar it does. If it doesn't, that's a problem. Okay, so we do expect it to increase initially, and then do we expect it to re remain relatively constant after three minutes? Actually, yeah. When it's steady state submaximal exercise, that's the key. Okay, with steady states to maximal exercise, when the energy required by the muscles equals the amount of oxygen that's being delivered to those muscles, yeah, we do get a systolic blood pressure that levels off after three minutes. Yeah, that's normal. 
We do. We do. And the reason being is that we get a heart rate that levels off. We get a stroke volume that levels off. Have y'all ever heard of cardiac output? All right. One of the major drivers of your systolic blood pressure is how hard the heart is contracting how fast it's beating. So if the heart rate and the stroke volume and the cardiac output, all that levels off, guess what happens to the systolic blood pressure? It levels off as well. All right. So I love D. D is, is satisfying every single piece of this question, the steady state submaximal part, the increasing initially and remaining relatively constant after three minutes. It satisfies it, baby. Yes. 100%. Final answer here is D, systolic blood pressure. For those of you who got this question correct, congratulations. For those of you who didn't, really look at what is the reason why I didn't. Is it a test-taking error I made? Is it a knowledge problem? I didn't know what steady state was, and that's cool. Now you do. All right, was it an application issue? Really figure out what is the major issue. That way we can start to study in ways that fix that particular problem. All right. That is the key to getting a better score on your next practice exam is attacking the problems that you're having.